hello everyone uh, it's good to be here and um, I'm not taking this for granted I'd like to say a big thank you to auntie for making this possible It's a long chain of connection till it got to me but I'm not taking this for granted I wouldn't have been given this opportunity to talk to you virtually if not because of her please can you do me a favor by giving her a round of applause auntie thank you very much for this opportunity and let me introduce myself. My name is Pastor Ben Nat Oye. And since I'm a young person and we're all talking to young people, let's leave the pastor name aside and let, uh, let me give you a name. You know, we, we function better with nicknames here. So my name is Ben Taniel. So, so that we can relate well. So my name is Ben Taniel, Benjamin and Nathaniel. When you squash it together, you have Ben Taniel. So I am Ben Taniel and I'm, I'm glad to be here. And my desire is that we all give our ears and hearts to learning today. I love rephrasing topics so that we can be able to um, relate better. So I will be dealing with the topic I'll be talking on today is embracing innovation. So I want you to tell your neighbor, embrace innovation. I, I don't like the vibes I'm getting. I, like, I said, tell your neighbor, embrace innovation. Look, your, look at your neighbor eyeball to eyeball and tell him or her, embrace innovation. Today, we'll be looking at various um, examples from the Bible. We're not related to us as individuals on earth. So, like I said, our topic today is embracing innovation so before we get started i'd like us to invite the presence of god into this meeting because uh, as a man i'm limited but with his presence and the holy spirit we can be able to talk well that you will understand so can you do me a favor by bowing your head down let us say a prayer to god in jesus name father we thank you for this wonderful day a great opportunity you've given unto us to be among to be counted among the living and here are we today in class not just in class to be part of this teaching but our desire is that you open our hearts and open our ears to understand to hear what we discuss today and our desire is that Lord, we will not just go home but we pick something from this discussion or oh, in Jesus name we pray Amen. And I believe God is going to take us through. So, today we are gathered to explore a profound aspect of our Savior, Jesus Christ, that often gets overlooked. Jesus wasn't just a teacher and a healer. He was a revolutionary figure who brought new ways of thinking and acting into the world. In doing so, he provided us with a perspective or should I say he provides us with a perfect blueprint for how we can become innovative individuals boys and girls even in a world filled with distractions you can bear me witness that we have there are many distractions in the world and it becomes so difficult for us to be able to innovate because whenever you come up with an idea of what you want to do, the distraction will just come very pew, pew, and take it away. But today, God will help us to get our minds settled and take advantage of these things we're going to learn today. So, our topic is a combination of two words, embracing and innovation. So, I'll just leave embracing by the side and talk about innovation. Because like, this is what we are. This is the main focus of our discussion today. So, what is innovation? Innovation is the act of introducing something new or improving existing methods, ideas, or products in a way that creates significant value. So, it's two things. You're either creating something new or you are adding to something that's already existing. It involves creativity fresh thinking, and the courage to break from tradition. Let me come again. Innovation involves creativity, fresh thinking, and the courage to break from tradition. Most times we refuse to do something not because it's not good, 
but because we say our parents have been doing it that way so there's a tradition we are following that is limiting us from becoming what innovative so innovation is not just about invention it's about finding better solutions and more effective ways to address challenges once upon a time there was no cars in the world but there was this involvement from bicycle to steam engine and what we have today we have a, we have cars today and now not just cars now we have it have evolved now we are talking about electric cars we are, we are talking about self-driven cars so that is what, what, what just happened there finding better ways to solve problems so I guess possibly one of the reasons why the invention of self-driving cars came to be is because of to reduce what accident one of the reasons why uh, electric cars came to be is to re reduce what carbon emission in the world so let's still let's go on let's see what is the bible talking about isaiah chapter 43 verse 19. see i am doing a new thing now it springs up do you not perceive it i am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wetland if i will try to explain this based on the context this is what it's saying. Possibly there have been shortage of water. So an innovation is to find how to bring water available. Possibly the roads that were there were not okay. What is he saying? I'm making a way in the wilderness. That means possibly there's no way in the wilderness. So and people are passing that direction and they are finding difficulty in movement. So what is the innovative? What is innovative about there? bringing solutions to them, finding effective solutions. That is what it says, right? That's what it said uh, in, uh, in our definition. It's not just about doing something, but making it effective. Finding more effective way to address challenges. What is the challenge? People want to go from one city to the other, but they, there's a wilderness separating them. So what is the solution now? Is to connect road from one city to the other through the wilderness so that is how i'm just pointing out how the innovative nature of god is so let's go jesus christ the ultimate innovator that's we we'll point two things and we go john 2 verse 1 to 11 and i won't want to read because of our time i and i'll just read uh what i have here at the wedding in cana when the wine ran out, Jesus performed his first recorded miracle by turning water into wine. This act was not just a display of power, but an innovative solution to a social dilemma. What is the social dilemma? Someone who organized his, his wedding is going on. Wine just finished. Sharp. That means that is a social dilemma. That means there's a lack going on. Jesus stepped in and the innovative way, what happened? He used existing stuff. He did not create something new. That's what I'm saying. Innovation can come about something new or something old, but you're adding a touch to it. What happened? Things were already available. Most times, what the devil tried to do is to make us feel like we need to um, have certain things available before we can be able to innovate. No. Most often than not, things to solve problems are within do you get me most of the things we need to solve this problem or to be innovative are within the problem so you don't need to go far to think about or look for ways to get them done so what he did was to use what was available there's an empty pot was available there's water close by and there's human resources that means there were servants who are available to fetch the water. To be innovative doesn't mean you have to spend more. It's to use the resources available. Jesus Christ, all what he did was to instruct. He instructed them. They, they said, they told the servant, whatsoever he said you should do, do it. That was the instruction that was given to them. And after those things were done, most of us end up in being innovative or keeping it to ourselves. This is what Jesus did. When he has told them to put water in the, in the pot, after everything, he said, go and give it to the master of the ceremony to test. 
That means there must be someone that will vet or check what we are doing. That is why your aunties are there, your uncles are there. Most times we want to do things alone. That's why we struggle. But when you allow a mentor to be there to mentor or guide you, it becomes easier. So when they took the wine, the water to the master of the ceremony, he was the one that attest and said, this is a good wine that is better than the other. How did he know that it was better than the other? Because he has tasted the former wine. So we need that's the place of mentorship. But we leave that for now. Let's go to the next thing that happened. Feeding of the 5,000 in John 6 verse 1 to 14. Faced with a hungry crowd, Jesus took five loaves of bread and two fishes, gave thanks and distributed them to feed over 5,000 people. This miracle shows us how Jesus could see abundance where others saw scarcity. His innovative thinking multiplied resources to meet a critical need. This miracle shows us how Jesus could see abundance where others saw scarcity. Most times we are failures, not because we are failures, but because we see it. Not that they even tell us we are failures, but we saw it. But here Jesus saw abundance when people, other people are seeing scarcity. What are you seeing about yourself? That's the question I will leave you with. What are you seeing about yourself? Are you seeing yourself like a failure? Or because people have said you're a failure, you've generalized you're a failure. Before you can possess an innovative mind, you have to make sure you see beyond the ordinary. What others are seeing is not going to be what you are seeing because I said initially, to every problem around, the solution lies within. So your work should be, what is this solution around? A friend told me, whenever he's encountering any problem, he ask God, what did you want me to see? And that is what I want you to know. If Jesus was carried away by the scarcity, he wouldn't have noticed the little that was present. And the little present, if not appreciated, it cannot be amplified. Most of us have gifts, have talent in us, but because we have not yet appreciated what we have, it cannot multiply. God appreciated the little fish and the bread. That's, what it, that's why it multiplied. What gift is inside of you that you are looking down on? What ability do you possess? Can you draw? Do you have a way of solving problems? Do you have a way of gathering people and you talk to them and they will listen to you? But because people do not value it, you see it has nothing. It's time for you to appreciate that little gift. It's little. Uh -uh. You have a way of making people smile. It's little. But do you know that people that have appreciated it are feeling from it? You have a way of making people smile. People are living out of comedy. You have a way of gathering people that they will talk. People are living from motivating people. What is that skill in you that needs appreciation? Write it down. I'll just give you a few minutes. What is that skill inside of you that you see it is like it's nothing? Uh -uh. With your phone, you can manipulate and edit photo and you think it's nothing. You can, you can snap people well with your phone and you think it's nothing. Not until you appreciate it, it will not multiply. When Jesus gave thanks, what happened? The fish multiplied. And it was able to feed what? <laughs> How many people? 5,000 men. <laughs> so, what I'm trying to point out here is, not until you appreciate, it will not appreciate. <laughs> yes, that's true. Not until you thank God for what you have, it will not grow to become something that will pay you. So let's go on and see. Quickly, the next thing I've showed us how Jesus was innovative. There are many ways, there are many things he did. But for our time, I just base on these two. When you check carefully, you see that there's something he said. He said, greater works than this will you do. That means he said, what he has done is small compared to what he will do through you. If Jesus can do this, imagine what he will do. But all these things 
have limits. We can be better or we can do better than him when we are connected to him. When we don't allow sin to be a problem. So the next thing we'll be, I'll be talking about is the innovation framework. The innovation framework. Innovation involves a systematic approach. And this framework is the approach I'll be talking about. When you check carefully to the stories and what Jesus did, you'll be able to understand this framework. If you can recall the definition of what innovation is, you understand this framework. So number one, identify the need. What is the challenge or what is the need around? Recognize the specific problem or opportunity that requires a new solution. What is the need? It's not just in the school, in your environment. Why are we talking about the innovative framework? We are talking about the innovative framework so that it can stimulate you to be innovative. What Jesus did, he did not just stand up and start doing them. He did them based on the need that were present. So now, the innovative framework is asking you, number one, to identify the need. So let's go to number two. Identify what is available. I say number one is what? Yes, identify the need. Number two is what? Identify what is available. Access the resources, skills and knowledge you already possess. Evaluate how this existing element can contribute to addressing the need. This is the need. What did I possess that can meet this need? I hope you get it. Then we can even go further. What do I need to learn to meet this need? We can even go further. Who do I have to go to teach me how to meet this need? So, let's go on. The third one is identify what to add to the available. Do you get it? Determine what new element whether ideas, tools, or methods need to be integrated with what you already have. This combination will create a solution that meets the identified need effectively. So let us go back to these three things, then connect it to what Jesus did with in feeding the 5,000. So, we have a problem. Hungry crowds around. So, identify the need. What is the need? Let me hear you say it. Hungry people. Right. Clap for yourself. Okay. So, we have identified the need. So, the next is, number two. Identify what is available. Do we have roasted cow available? No. Do we have shawarma available? No. Do we have Donuts available? Oh, do we have milky donuts available? No. What is available? The fish and the what? Bread. That is what is available. So when the need was identified, what was available was what? Identified to, which is the fish and the bread. So the next one is what to add to the available. So based on the scripture, what Jesus added to the available that it fed 5,000 was just giving thanks. That means within Jesus Christ, he has the ability to multiply things. But if he hasn't identified what is available, he cannot what? Multiply anything. So, he first of all identified the need and identified what is available. Then the next thing is he added to what is available and he was able to feed 5,000 with that. What is it that you, the need you've identified in your community, check for what is available, then look for what to add to it. And before you know it, your name will go far. People, people who their names are known are people who are innovative. Aside Christ giving us life, 
one of the other things he did, he did many innovative works. Is it the blind man? The blind man where Jesus spit on the floor and molded sand and put it on his eyes and he could see. You understand? So these are these are people who are known are people who are innovative. And today your principal wants you to be known. Elon Musk is known. Why? He's known because of his innovation. This one that is doing a project to build in, 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 in the space. Mark Zuckerberg is known. Why? Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. What do you want to be known for? I know in our time now, we are carried away with activities. Yeah, I'm a big boy. Yeah, yeah. That's why I get my cap here. Yeah, I'm a big boy. I want to do things. I want to move with the flow. But do you know that moving with the flow will only limit you? And I told my friends in school, I said, a big boy is someone who has solved a problem and the problem has made him known. Mark Zuckerberg is a big boy, isn't he? Dan Gote is a big boy, isn't he? Elon Musk is a big boy. You, what have you innovated that you are trying to, you are, you are carrying shoulder up? Yes. Big boy is not about drinking. It's not about hiding. It's not about sleeping with girls. No. Big boy is about what your name have done. I'm very sorry to say this. Some of us, our parents are not even big boys because they don't even know them. And they are not even known. And you are saying you are a big boy. They only know in your class. They did not even know in the whole school. All what I'm trying to say is when you solve a problem, you become a big boy. So find a problem to solve. I'm eager to see that big boy or that big girl in you. It's not about big girl or big girl. Big boy or big girl. It's about the problem you solve. So identify the problem and solve it. So why is it that most of us are not innovative? We have smartphones here that we can do things with and create innovation that we send our names abroad. But why is it that we are not innovative? Taking us to our next, next topic, innovating in a distracted world. This is one of the difficult things to do. It's just like saying you want to concentrate your reading and the class, they are making noise. It becomes very difficult. Though there are some gifted people that can read in noisy areas. It becomes difficult to be innovative. As teenagers or as young people today, you are surrounded by distractions from social media. Now we have phones. Some of us deliberately bought phones because we want to do things that we bring money, that we do things that we bring. But as we buy the phone, we have not done anything. It's just to snap picture. Hey, hey, and put it on social media and say, oh, like, 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 man, did not like me. You know, some people will go to the extent of even carrying their clothes up and snapping some ladies so that you have more likes. All these things are distractions to distract us from becoming innovative. Because when you become innovative, the chances of you making wealth from that innovation is very high. So, as young people today, you are surrounded by distractions from social media to peer pressure and constant information overload. What you do not ask for, you get. Some bad songs, some of us never learnt it. But it's overload anywhere you go, you listen to them, and it's becoming part of us. But you are also in a unique position to be innovative, just like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, even in his time, there was distraction, but he was focused. That's why he was able to meet that. So let me just share with you examples of online distraction. So this is what I would do. I'd like to give you to give me like five examples of online distractions. Let me see. Distractions. Not just online. Any distractions. So, Auntie, can you please pause this and I wait for them and I'll come back. These are true, true, true distractions. Physical distraction and online distraction. These are things that are stopping us from becoming innovative. So, let me just list out what I have here. Then we will go on. One, one, one distraction is called cyberbullying. This includes sending hurtful messages, spreading rumors, or sharing embarrassing photos and video 
videos online about someone because you have phone, someone is sleeping in class and he opens his mouth and you went and snap it and put it online. That's cyberbullying. But these are the things that are stopping many people from becoming innovative. They are like, if I do this now, people online will start attacking me, attacking me, attacking me, and I don't have a strong heart. I don't want to be attacked. I don't want to do this. But well, all I'm trying to say is, these things are some of the things that distract people from becoming innovative. Then the next one is accessing inappropriate content. Now, there's, these days, it becomes so easy. You are holding your phone and you are, you are building yourself in the most holy faith and you are walking judiciously. But you are online doing something and information will just flag. Clap! If you are eating, click this. And you click it, it takes you to a site that is inappropriate. And it's not because you want to go get there, but because the system is built in that way. With a vast amount of information available online, teenagers can easily access inappropriate content such as pornography and violent video. You know pornography, what it ex exposes people to, is not just the self-gratification. This is what sometimes leads to rape. This is what encourages uh, masturbation and so on. So, and the truth is there are some things that you better don't start because to stop is very difficult. And these are data-eating videos or content. So, this exposure can negatively affect their mental health and development as well as their perception or relationship and violence. When you feed yourself with this negative stuff, to be innovative while I is going to be difficult. So this is one distraction. Excessive social media use. It's not your fault. The social media is built in such a way that when you get there, you get so attached to it, and before you know it, time has gone. Like if you're on Instagram or TikTok, when you open one video, the moment one is finishing, the other one is coming up. The moment that one is finishing, another one is coming up. So what, are, what is happening? You are going to have access to many videos without you knowing. You're not just saying, okay, after this one, after this one, 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 I will stop. Then you're not finished watching. Then the next one that comes up is sweet. You say, oh! Yes, after this one. Then you now realize that before you know it, hours have passed. We often spend excessive amount of time on social media platforms like Instagram, like I said, TikTok, Facebook, and Facebook. This can lead to addiction. And when you are addicted to it, what will happen? It will decrease your productivity. And what, when it decreases your productivity, what becomes of it? It brings about poor academic performance. It's not that you're not intelligent, but because you have given your time to things that doesn't matter, what happens? You become dull and mental health issues like anxiety depression and low self-esteem due to the constant comparison with others now you now see a teenager like you so always for 10 years he has buy a car now you now say ah me ma i be like him who was supposed to buy a car you understand then that comparison will start coming now low self-esteem will step in ah people like say god don't like me and these are some of the reasons why it's important we control what we consume. When we allow everything, it has a way of destroying our mentality and destroying our perception about ourselves. The other one is due to what you see other people posting online and you feel like they are big boy, they are big girl, and you want to be part of them. The other one is online scam and fraud. Some people use their phones to engage in or fall victim to online scam and fraud. This includes participating in or being targeted by peasant schemes, fraudulent investment opportunity, or identified theft. Such, a, such activities can have legal consequences and financial losses. So when you have compared yourself with someone who just bought car now, you know, say, oh, you want to belong, so you want to join financial scam and do, do, do all those things. This will now take your mind away from being productive. Instead of being productive, become redundant and looking for who to steal from. To every man God created, he, has, he gave the person an ability to multiply, to produce, to grow. But the moment you refuse to be innovative or the moment you refuse to tap into what you have, you begin to think of how to collect what people have. And that is what leads to other people to steal it. I pray God will help us that we will not end up stealing because of the stuff we feed ourselves. God will help us to control 
what we take in in Jesus name so let's go to the next distraction sexting sexting involves sending or receiving sexual explicit messages photos or videos this behavior can lead to various legal issues like blackmail and emotional distress in as much as we are so young to start relationships some people who have already started relationship I should I call your name but let us just leave it there so someone will want to tell you that if you love me send me a naked picture because you are too young to be engaged in a relationship I don't know what love is you will now because you want to show him that you love him you will now send him a naked picture and that naked picture can make the person do what do what you don't want to do now let me give you an instance you send your naked picture to this person this person will now tell you if you do not have sex with me i'm going to show this naked picture to everybody did you plan that you want to have sex before but because you feel loving this person is sharing your most pride possession you now send that image to you and the person now uses it to blackmail you and get what you don't want to need what you want what you don't want to give out so love goes beyond what we think so allow your mind to mature before you move into a relationship this topic is another topic on its own i will leave your guidance and counselor teacher to do that but if i'm opportunity to come up to come one on one with you we have sessions and talk on this and i'm looking forward to coming to akure for a wonderful practical session on ai and other discussions so it also poses risks of personal content being shared without consent leading to public humiliation and long term consequences all of us here we are potential great people but the actions we take today will deprive us of becoming that which we are meant to be yes so now let's just go to the next thing which is cultivating innovation with phones leveraging on ai so i'm going to just rush it because of our time and i pray that possibly you make that time and invite me over we'll now go practical sessions i'll tell you things we can do we'll create them create videos with ai create uh content with ai create graphics with ai and i pray we we, we would, if we can do it invite me and come what we'll do is possibly we'll, we'll do an online whatsapp teaching and we'll be able to achieve that so cultivating innovation with phones leveraging on ai so let's go quickly now you don't have to stress yourself to do certain things like before we all most of us have smartphones do you know with your smartphones you can develop mobile app you can learn to coach and create mobile apps that solve specific problems or provide entertainment using ai tools like google tesoflow or apple core ml they can integrate features such as voice recognition image processing or personalized recommendation so these are some of the things you can do with ai so i'll just give us some of the things just rapidly creating content with ai you can use ai powered content creation to to produce high quality video did you go to school to do that or did you spend years in university to do that no but you can do it with ai power tool you can you can write lyrics but you have you don't have good voice so you want to have a song that you wrote there are ai tools that can produce music from you using your lyrics someone will just sing it for you or you you want to you you, you are not a graphic designer but you want to design you want to design there are AI tools that can do that. I will give you an example of the AI tools, then we now go. We have tools like Lumen5 can turn written content into image video. Lumen5, L-U-M-E-N-5, can turn written content into engaging video. While platforms like Canva have AI-driven design tools, Canva, C-A-N-V-A, -A, has AI-driven design tools in them that you can just go up, you just see template, you just change something, and you have your design tool. And we can go on and on. Now, if you check carefully, there's something that is trending 
in the YouTube world. They call it faceless video. And with AI, most of these people get this done. With AI, they get it done. You generate your content with chat GPT. You generate, you just say, chat GPT, write a story about this for me. Then when you've written a story, you now go and generate your video. When you generate your video, you can either put your voice or tell, go to uh, a software that can be able to put your, an AI that can put voice for you, and you just match them and put them online. And when you are doing that over and over, over again, you will be able to generate traffic and that will happen. YouTube will start paying you. I have started but I have not been consistent. I will tell you they are paying me. But I started, I just put four videos there and work took my mind away. So, but you can make wealth through AI content creation. You don't have to do too much thinking. You just do small thinking and AI will finish the thinking for you. Then. The other AI tool we'll be looking at is learning and tutoring AI tools. You can use AI powered educational app to enhance your learning in specific subjects like math or science or language. Now apps like Khan Academy, that's K-H-A-N-A-C-A-D-E-M-I, Academy, or Socratic. Socratic, that's S-O-C-R-A-T-I-C, -C by Google. All these things I mentioned, they use AI to prove personalized learning, to provide personalized learning experience and solve problems in real time. So whatever challenge you have, when you go to this website, they will give you opportunity to do that. But I'm just listing them out because we don't have time. I'm just saying, give an example of how we can be innovative and what tools we can use. What we have that is available, we have our phones. And we can do this with our phones. So I'll be sharing a link much later that will be able to, you fill the link, we'll get a group so that these things I'm mentioning, I can be able to, uh, with the guidance of your teacher, I can be able to, we can just do a, a basic course training. Because master class for these things, people pay for it. But we'll do a basic course training where if you pay attention to the basic course well, you'll be able to learn all these things. So we we move on. So we have many eye driven tools. Even so you want to learn some things online and you want them for free. You can go to Coursera. We have Coursera, we have Allison, we have there are many. So all these things is to identify what you want. Before you get to even university, you can learn what you want to learn in university at home before you get there. So getting there becomes a refresher thing for you. So all the, these courses are online, it's just for you to access them. And I will be able to give you most of the links much later after you fill the Google form, then I will know your needs. When I find your needs, I'll be able to meet everybody according to your needs and push that out. That will be the sacrifice and my gift to you all. All these things I mentioned, all these things we talked about becomes more easier when Christ is in you. Jesus Christ was able to do those things amidst those distractions because Christ is in him and the Holy Spirit guides him to make decisions. Guides him to make decisions. So dear friends, because we are friends, my brothers, my sisters, Things can get a lot better when Christ is in the center of our hearts. I don't know what has been your challenge. You are struggling to be innovative. First of all, remove all those distractions from your mind. And how can distractions be removed from your mind? When you allow Jesus Christ to come and be your Lord and Savior. Everything, when he comes in, he gradually, it might not change immediately. But he gradually walks in you and restores your sanity back that you'll be able to think well and become productive as a young person. Nigeria is suffering today. Why? Because most of us are carried away with distractions. Most of us have allowed negative things to so crowd our mind that we cannot be productive. And a man that is not productive, what happens? The next thing he will try to resolve to do is to be a thief, to collect. 
and the Lord did not make you to be a collector. The Lord created you to be a solution. And a solution is someone who produces, who meets a need. And that is who God created you to be. So if I have people here who deep down inside of you, you know Christ is not in you. Deep down in you, you know Christ is not in you. Or you've received Christ, but you allow friends, distractions to come into your life that even you on your own, whenever you sit down, you can never think, sit down and think good about yourself. It's only negative things coming in. These are signs that we need Christ to come and purge our hearts. So if I have people like this, please let's bow our heads and close our eyes. If I have people like this, I want you to raise up your hands. I'm going to pray together. You're going to raise up your hands and we'll pray together this afternoon or this morning, whatever time you're looking at this. So at this moment, I will want Auntie to pause this video and make this prayer for them.